Maraming salamat po, Dr. Poblador. Bago po natin ipukas ng kapag sa open forum, bayaan niyo lang po ako magbigay ng buod ng sinabi ng bawat isa so that we will have a platform for uh, uh, each today's questions that may already be percolating in your heads. Um, our first speaker, former President Nemeniso, articulated what he thought was the essential mission of the university, which is really to develop what he called intellectual capital, meaning to produce the best scientists, the best artists, the best researchers, uh, etc. And for this reason, he thinks that we should stick to the fact and not fiddle around with it in order to uh, maintain standards of admission, even though he says we are a middle class university and uh, there's still proof that we admit people from lower income classes and uh, the data would show that we, we don't really have very rich students coming in to the university. So he says our main mission, aside from the first one, is to improve secondary education so that those who have the capability and the brilliance and the IQ from the public schools can come in and contribute to building the intellectual capital that we are so proud of. He disagrees with the notion that UP is a microcosm of the Philippine society because he thinks it is something uh, that would really uh, be the basis for creating a new and better society. Uh, it will give birth to a society struggling to be born, meaning that UP needs to be uh, well, loyal or should adhere to its critical mission and to uh, critique the current status quo, as she said, which is guided by neoliberal civilization. And our students should have the academic freedom, not only students but also faculty, to question what does the impact of that pattern of development on our people. Now, uh, Vice President Rivera. Uh, of course, uh, articulated UP's uh, position as to what the current administration considers to be public service. And he takes off from the charter of the UP, uh, which talks about community and public uh, volunteer service, scholarly and technical assistance, which he says is made possible because UP has the ex expertise, it has the linkages, it has a broad alumni network, and it is the only one with uh, national geogra geographic reach. And he went, he goes on to uh, quote a uh, scholar who redefines scholarship not only as a generation of knowledge, but also its integration, its communication, its application. And then he, he talked about emerging networks that are Asia-wide and so global that shows how knowledge has become uh, of value, not only here in our country, but elsewhere. And the sharing aspect is there to, uh, to still move on and develop. Uh, then he goes on to say, send on the, the example provided by the University of Typhoon Sendong, uh, and his response to Typhoon Sendong, shows that uh, there is need for a well-targeted and coordinated response. It's not necessarily the model, but it shows how UP can uh, really uh, provide immediate relief and assistance to communities, provided that there are uh, there is support from the highest levels and other they are mobilized. And then he, he talks about the new office called the Padayan Public Service Office that promises to uh, uh, they provided support in the order of 2 to 10 percent of university income, not to replace current initiatives, but to coordinate uh, efforts at ground level and to disseminate whatever is the impact to the broader public. And he cites particular projects like Phoenix Rebuild and uh, the Ensipal project, uh, 
fulfilling of this collaboration among units and campuses and their function. Now, Dr. Gomez takes off from his natural science background and starts by raising some negative questions or images of what UT seems to be. Are we overrated? Do we fear comparison? Do we foster divisiveness and tribalism? Are we getting very cynical about what we can do or what we are? But at the same time, he talks about the positive images or realities that UP is composed of intelligent people, we have open minds, and we have support, and then we also have uh, an environment that is beautiful, which is the UP campus. His recommendation is that we continue to recruit the best minds, but he problematizes also uh, this initiative or this ambition of UP to be really the best. Um, who defines this and how are administrations evaluated as to whether they reach the bar of being the best, not only here but also in the region and perhaps globally. And he argues that public service is not the prime concern of UP because he says that public service should be the mandate of public service institutions charge of disasters, etc. And our role in UP is to capacitate people who are leading these institutions to be able to render public service better and in a more effective way. And then he ends with what he says should come to pass, or <laughs> we should um, strive to develop, which is not just a tough UP, but a tough excellent, meaning janitors to the full professors should be examples of a culture of excellence. Uh, Dr. Plog Poglador, who comes from a science and economics and business background, uh, disagrees with the current UP policy that seeks to, uh, well, uh, limit access to uh, our research outputs, the thesis, etc., of our students um, by instituting uh, a regime of intellectual property rights and patents, etc., which he thinks slow down the process of discrimination and give rise to the domination and hegemony of what may be considered inferior products. And he thinks UP should not be in this patenting, patenting business and should not have this new office which constitutes another layer of the bureaucracy. And instead, UP should serve as a facilitator of the free flow of knowledge and information, support the policy of open access. So, to the question, Tama Bangilagwan and UP, in terms of Tama Bangilagwan and Sabaya, ang sagot niya hindi. With uh, all these things in mind, maybe we can now start the open forum. And may I request people perhaps to introduce themselves and to keep their comments uh, cogent and short. And may I invite the students who are in the margins to also come to the table and ask their questions. Yes, um, thank you. Good morning. To pick the YD from the Institute of Islamic Studies. I am very glad that uh, Dr. Lorenzo speaks of the basic functions of the university, particularly the need to develop uh, intellectual capital and the possibly the alternatives to the promotions of academic freedom. And it's um, antipathy, I would say, to uh, uh, personalizing status quo. In other words, it has to be always progressive. Um, that um, should develop uh, orientation to develop society. And um, I think this connects also to the presentations of. Uh, the, 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 the 
bilingual civic engagement where university can engage in. My view is that um, academic freedom and civic engagement are not necessarily mutually inclusive. I think they relate very well with each other. I think the fullness of an academic freedom if it's certain point translated into certain form of civic engagement. or vice uh, versa. But this is if we speak of these two variables existing without any context. Um, there are times um, these two categories may even clash with each other if there are some contexts that would um, determine the relationship of these two variables. And I'm very glad that uh, Dr. Lemenso speaks of the negative role of neo-economic liberalism as possibly a factor that uh, would affect academic freedom on, on I will talk of this um, later but there was earlier a critical factor for instance where academic freedom may be infringed or affected even say for instance state intervention would come to play with utilizing um, intellectual resources of the university in pursuit of person, person, certain regimes and uh, objectives. A classic case is the Martian law, when um, uh, certain personalities, I could say, um, succumb to the pressure possibly from the Martian law regime. Uh, to support the science of the vision. And that I think poses a very strong dilemma um, to intellect once in the university at the time. A critical factor, for instance, in the context of our era is that um, the entry of the tentacles of neoliberalism um, has somehow dominated the interests or by the say concern of, um, of many of our scholars or intellectuals. Um, for instance, um, many international financial agencies or institutions possibly even attached to international funding agencies or, or big powers or even um, um, the United States, Japan, and many others, would usually hire the expertise of, of, um, of our intellectuals, um, who are at some point maybe helpful in addressing certain problems of the country, but at another point, they fundamentally um, simply serve the interests of funding agencies in foreign powers. So that the notions of academic freedom and our notions of developing social um, critique um, is jeopardized because this creates a dilemma of our intellectuals, somehow making them in fact simply errant boys, you know, of certain um, international funding agencies and many others. So, help us resolve this dilemma, uh, Dr. Lomenzo and Vivian Rivera. How do we go into way through or to steer these intricacies of interest of neoliberal um, framework vis-a-vis -vis our interest to advance you know, academic freedom and in fact to further 
advance the notions of civic engagement. Um, so that we will feel a little bit content that we are not being utilized by uh, foreign you know, um, par parties or international public agencies and we are promoting our own interests uh, as intellectuals and as citizens of, of the country. Now that is for uh, Dr. Lemenso and Phoebe Gunera. Let me go into the points of uh, Dr. Gomez. Um, perhaps I just didn't make questions of hearing Dr. Gomez back to Professor Lemenso. I think it was Washington, Sicily, in his Sassitania lecture a few years ago, when he um, raised the question, if indeed UP is the best, why is the country, why is the Philippines like this? Suggesting, I think, I would assume, a kind of a contradiction between um, a, a belief on a kind of a psychological pride by people in the university that they are the best, but this does not reflect into the real conditions of, of the Philippines. Um, so this creates a kind of, again, of a ambivalence or a dilemma in terms of how we handle, for instance, this psychological pride of being the best in the country. We are producing people who are in the government and many others. But it seems there are contradictions in terms of reflecting the ideals of the university into the society that we are producing. So how do we uh, also harmonize this, this kind of contradiction so that we'll develop a clearer handling of the psychological pride, we may say, um, of this way? Thank you very much. So may we invite uh, Dr. Nelson, President Nelson, and Vice President Delera. I am not against, uh, by the way, the unit that was uh, created under martial law included your, included your own. In fact, the Institute of uh, Islamic Studies was born at that time. And they wanted to, so they were hoping that they could pacify Sulu and uh, please nor Mishwari if we set up that unit. But I cannot really mind. Our getting funding from foreign funding agencies or from the government. And important, what I find distasteful is for us to adjust our research budget, our intellectual interest to the agenda of these funding agencies. Uh, let me tell you a story. When I was dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, I got an offer from the uh, from the Ford Foundation that they would like to support the non-economic social sciences and they have funds for that. I, I didn't even ask for it, they were the ones who And So we have to work out our plans. We worked out our plans quite easily. And when we submitted it, eh, sabi nila, it's approved yan, you have to go do it this way and that way. I, I could already see that they, were, they have their own uh, research agenda and they wanted us to to fit into it. The head of Ford Foundation at that time was UC Simmons. So when this was, the rejection letter was referred to me by President Corpus, I immediately, I immediately responded uh, in bureaucratic, bureaucratic language that respectfully returned to the President of the University of the Philippines recommending that OC Simmons goes to hell with his dollars. <laughs> and the secretary of the president's office automatically furnished a photocopy to O.C. Simmons. So that was the end of the But I, I didn't regret it. Because uh, what I mean, I done. If funds are available, then our own research interest, interest coincide with the with their agenda, well and good. So it is important that we as individual scholars, the university as an autonomous body, and the Philippines as a whole should be clear about what its interests are. And let that be 
let that determine what we are going to do as academics. If funds are available from these funding agencies, I see no reason why we should reject whom if it coincides with our concept of what our country needs. So. Yeah, I, I agree completely with uh, President Nemenso uh, because if one can mention instances where funding agencies dictate the research agenda, there are equal number of instances where you, the experts, dictate the agenda of government. Not necessarily those of funding agencies. Let, let me cite an example. The now uh, famous uh, Project NOAA that is happening in this country. Uh, the one running it is Mahal Pai, who is our product, part of uh, our uh, intervention in, uh, in uh, Sendong. Uh, that is something extremely needed in the country right now. Uh, using both funds internally and externally generated funds. But if you talk to Mahal and the other UP experts who are there, uh, they, there is sufficient discretion to dictate how it should go. Why? Because there is recognized expertise from the university. Meaning expertise on its own has a capacity to dictate the terms of reference. So I think what is important is for the UP to really show that it has the expertise, that it is number one. And it arms the university capacity to, to dictate the research agenda, dictate the terms of engagement, uh, and be clear about, as, as Dr. Nemenso said, dictate about what is national interest, what is the interest of the, of the university. I think what we need in UP is a capacitating environment to, to, to develop the expertise. More funds for research, more funds for the scholarships for people to get uh, to get uh, their PhDs, etc. To foster a an environment of excellence, so that the university will have the capacity to dictate its terms on how things should go. Uh, Dr. Gomez, can you answer the second question, please? I'm sure I can answer it properly, but I'll uh, share a few thoughts with you. Uh, one of our problems, actually, it, one of the questions I think in, in, in my presentation is that we tend to overrate ourselves. And when we say we're the best, I think that's one sign of being overrated. Uh, you know, now that I don't have to prepare lesson plans and so on, I have a little bit of time to do some outside of parallel reading. And uh, my favorite areas are, of course, nonfiction besides the sciences. Although I, I think I've read a fair bit of marine science, so I usually don't uh, do priority to put it related to marine science. I'm now doing a little bit of reading of uh, history and so on. And uh, since you mentioned me here from the Institute of Studies, uh, one of the areas I'm beginning to try to understand is uh, the whole uh, Sulu uh, history, uh, where we come from, where they come from, where all of this uh, comes into being. And a lot of it is just beginning to sort of um, open up in, in my own uh, mind. Uh, a lot of this, the issues there, for example, had to do with trade, and it was trade with China, trade with the West. It had nothing to do with religion. Um, and it was a question as to who had the rights for uh, some resources and who had the right to trade and so on and so forth. But I, I won't go too much into that. What I want to, to, to get at is this question of uh, the word best. Um, you know, in the line of the blind, the one-eyed man is the best. But the one-eyed man is not the best in the two-eyed world. So, are we still uh, the one-eyed best and not the two-eyed best in UP? That's a question I want to pose. Um, you see, one of the things I also posted in my uh, slides here was 
maybe it was a little bit of patting myself on the back about uh, the Marine Science Institute. Um, we tried our best to do our best. And I think in the country, we are the best, possibly even in the region, Southeast Asia. But I am also very cognizant of the fact that we are still very limited in where we are uh, in the world. So, kung baga, yung best namin, hindi pa sapat, hindi pa tama, hindi ko lang And I think we have to be in that frame of mind. Madami pa tayong dapat gawin uh, to do things better. Uh, and yung isang sinasabi ko, I, I think we should stop uh, talking about being the best, but we should start talking more about being excellent. Yung my, uh, my opening remarks about if we had excellent janitors in this university, this place would look so clean. Uh, if we had excellent carpenters or excellent even architects and so on, our buildings would be the best in the world. Now we may have the best so-called, I, I don't know how that I'm not going to uh, agree, uh, say that I agree with this, we say we have the best architects. Okay. Uh, you talk to people from Archie, I don't know, they're the best. Uh, I deal with a lot of architects right now because I, uh, the Chancellor has asked me to sit in the College of Science Complex uh, Infrastructure Program. And I'll tell you, we're very far from being excellent. We have so many problems with our infrastructure. But yet we pride ourselves as being the best in Archie. But when I see the work that's being done, I shake my head. So it is, it being best is relative. We were not trying to say. And, and what I want to try to, to encourage everybody is to keep keep going up, keep going up, and then open your minds to see how where we are in the world, and uh, keep going up there, and, and that way to, to keep improving. Think positive, however. I don't want people to think negative. Think positive. There's always there's always a chance to get better and better, and I think. Uh, well, the other maybe last point here. You, you know, um, one of the things that happens in a lot of our discussions is, uh, with apologies to my Tobayan uh, here, Kabalek, uh, economist, we give too much uh, sort of uh, emphasis and value to money. Um, everything seems to be measured by how much money can we make or how much money can we generate. Uh, I think money is only a tool, but sometimes we make it the god of everything. Um, of course we need it, but I think there's a lot of other things that we should be looking at. Why are we doing things? I hope it's not to make money. Um, you know, um, okay, this is the last year, maybe it's a little bit personal. You know, I, I, I don't know whether I was introduced as being from that school in Taft Avenue. <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, one time I was having uh, a chat with one of my former colleagues there, and he asked me, at the time I was the director of the MSI, he asked me how much money I was, how much of my salary was. And I think at that time it was something like 25000 which at that time was relatively high now. And he looked at me and says, are you crazy? <laughs> and because my classmates who are in Makati, we're earning several times that, at least, if not ten times that. And then and this is this is his view. But I said to myself, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of things for this country, and I have gained the respect of my peers around the world on a small salary. Okay. So maybe, barring Professor Nem uh, uh, President Emerson, uh, President Emerson. I work on intellectual capital. That's, how, that's what I work on. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be in Bangkok because uh, I was invited to one conference. And then when somebody found out that I was going to be in Bangkok, I, they, they invited me to a follow-up workshop. And I says, no, I don't want, look, look what, uh, why don't you invite one of my junior colleagues? 
for up and coming in that field. And then the, the, the organizer says, no, we want you here. Because I have something to contribute, and it has nothing to do with money. Well, well see, this is, my, this is my greatest sort of pride and satisfaction of having, been, having spent my best years uh, here at UP. That's to contribute to help build intellectual capital in the life sciences. I, I think it, it's just that we have to keep trying, keep trying, and, uh, and then, but see where we are with the rest of the world, not just with the rest of the world. Okay, there are uh, how many hands on the floor? Okay, please. Magandang umaga po si Grace at hindi na design ng Departamento ng Psikolohiya sa Kolehyo ng Anghang Palimunan at Pilosofiya. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng inyong pagbabahagi at uh, sa particular uh, sa akin po ganda rin na sinabi na ni Dr. Gomez na maaaring kaiba ang kanyang pagtingin bilang uh, nagagaling sa natural sciences. Uh, Napanggit na rin yung uh, apat na nagsalita yung tungkol sa tama. No? So ang um, aking tanong ay, uh, kapag siguro sinasabi natin tama, na doon sa sinabi na rin, ay pag ang tanong ay ang tama ba para sa angham, ay tama rin para sa sining at angham panlipunan. Baka isang uh, paraan rin ito ng pagtingin no? sa kung ano ba ang usay at ano rin ang halaga ng public service. Kasi sa tingin ko sa angham panlipunan at filosofiya ay talagang bahagi na ng buod no? ng angham panlipunan ang paglilingkod. No? So yun ang tingin ko at na kapag sinusuri natin, kahit nasabihin na natin sa productivity, no, as a scientific productivity, uh, mahalaga ang tingin natin ito at na uh, kaugnay ito talaga ng pagtingin sa pangkalahatang uh, trabaho ng universidad. Um, so hindi ko alam kung sino uh, gusto magkomento noon, pero siguro kay Dr. Gomez at hindi ko tiya kung ang sinasabi ninyo kanina ay na hindi kayo sakayang dun sa research teaching and uh, service bilang tatlo sa pinakamahalagang tungkulin ng universidad. Yung ikalawa ko ay magbabagit na ako na napatingin ako o napahinto ako nung nabasa ko yung may tubog ba ang pagtulong ng UP. Ang iisip ko, ano bang translation ito? Profit ba? Uh, kasi bakit tubo ang pinili na salita? Parang uh, pera no ang pinapatungkulan at ito ba ang intensyon? May ibig ba sabihin ito na debate ba ang pinahangat? Uh, ikatlo po kay Dr. Uh, de Vera, na bangkit yung um, Asia Engage at um, dahil matagal ako ng trabaho sa larangan ng uh, Panginoon, siguro ang tanong ko ay uh, meron ba sa kasalukuyan ng pag-uugnay ng public service at saka ng academic, public and academic affairs? Kasi po pag pinapag-usapan natin ang engaged scholarship, uh, malinaw po na ito ay isang akademikong uh, pagsisikap. So yun po, at ikalawa, mas pinakapraktikal, ano po ang kaugnayan ng mga UP Pahinood ngayon uh, kaugnayan ng Padayon Service Office? Kasi actually po sa maraming tanong. Wala nyo po, nandiyan natin si Dr. Gomez ulit. Kasi yun po po ng tayo. Hindi ko lang sigurado kung hindi ko lahat yung sakyong tinanong ninyo. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think one of the areas was is what is good for the natural sciences uh, the same as what is good for the social sciences and for the arts. Siyempre, kung iba iba yung areas, siguro iba iba ang pagsukan. There are different measures. Um, and uh, you have to adjust your your ruler, so to speak. And uh, uh, one of the things that, that we should try to avoid is, uh, well, uh, say, say, comparing apples and oranges. Uh, we have to appreciate that an apple is a very nice, juicy fruit, and that an orange is also a nice, juicy fruit, but they're different. They, they, they all they both provide uh, you know, their nourishment. And, uh, they provide the calories and so on. So you cannot say, well, uh, what's good for an apple is good for an orange. Because, uh, well, botanically, you know, uh, physiologically, an apple tree has different requirements from, 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 a, from an orange tree. 
So then on, I, I think within the within the UP some, some, some diversity of disciplines and so on, there have to be sort of special uh, approaches and there so there have to be some special considerations for the different disciplines. Um, now I don't know if you're getting at, for example, this question of you know, but, uh, but evaluate because sometimes I uh, hear debates about uh, in the natural sciences it's easy to publish in the social sciences it's more difficult in the arts it's something different and therefore we should not have one measure although sometimes what we need to do is uh, in, in some respects um, there are certain things that are same discipline, except that not only you and the other one just needs to just needs to catch up. Uh, what specific example? Um, the, uh, in, in some university for uh, a year, people complain uh, that there are not enough ISI journals for the social sciences, and then. I happen to have a son who is in the social sciences, and he was published. And his first publication, he got fifty-five thousand pesos. And then, uh, then I started to become curious, and then I find out through him that there are many ISI journals in the social sciences. It's just that most people don't know about them, and. The culture of publishing has not uh, uh, sort of progressed as rapidly in the social sciences as it has in the natural sciences. So I think the point there is to bring the social scientists up to speed, make them aware that there are these opportunities, and they can earn uh, a lot of money through IPA just like the natural scientists. So I got maybe may discipline. Maraming salamat po doon. Pero yung isang issue ko ito paugnay uh, ng ISI ay halimbawa po naglalathala sa Pilipino uh, sa ngayon naman po ay wala pa yun sa ISI. So yung mga ganun po bagay na para lang mas palawakin natin. Uh, May mga tagotin yun. Mayroon ko 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 mga tagotin yun. Pero walang ISI. But we have a special category yung 55,000 pesos. Uh, we also go to whoever can publish in Filipino. In fact, ma mas generous to on the ISI related. Eh. Uh, I'm quite a lot of our, our faculty members in uh, Cal have uh, uh, collected their honorarium for that. So, hindi lang ISI ang ginagamit natin. Yeah, um, I, I think the question you raised uh, goes back to what did Wadi earlier mentioned uh, when he said if the if we are so good and we are so excellent, why why are we in this country in such bad shape? Uh, meaning, uh, public service can only succeed and have an impact if we have academic excellence. The two cannot go separate from each other. Uh, public service uh, is most effective when the expertise of the university is used in civic engagement. And civic engagement is a long continuum from uh, just uh, uh, from starting from fora like this, where the expertise of the university, its researchers are disseminated, all the way to engaging with communities and all the way with empowering communities. But that can be done successfully if we have something to be of service. Uh, that's why uh, I do not agree with the, with the uh, assertion that the university should not be doing public service uh, primarily. Uh, because it goes hand in hand with what the university is all about. Uh, our mandate is to provide a unique and distinctive leadership role in higher education and development. And part of that should be done through public service. Uh, 
for, for example, um, I, I disagree that it should just be the bureaucracy just doing work on disaster management. What if the expertise is with the university? It is our responsibility to lend our experts to uh, the bureaucracy so that the bureaucracy does a better job. Or it is our responsibility to train people in the bureaucracy to do a better job. It is our responsibility to uh, uh, do uh, research so that things can be done better. All of that are aspects of uh, public service. Uh, so it, it cannot be divorced. What I'm saying is public service should be part and parcel of what the university does uh, because that is our mandate as a national university. Uh, now, yung, yung tanong about the academic versus the public affairs, I, I agree that there is a lot of tension there. Uh, in my work in the region, working on civic engagement in the networks, what saddens me in a sense is um, when the other universities in the region start talking about civic engagement, medyo nakukulihan ako kasi matagal saka mas maganda ng ginagawa ng UP yan to be very frank. Some of the things they're doing, we've been doing 20 years ago. Uh, and when we start talking about it, they are amazed by how UP has been doing it consistently over time. What saddens me is that it is the other universities in the region who are now taking the lead in civic engagement. That UP, University of Bangsa and Malaysia, is aggressively taking a leadership role in redefining what civic engagement is in the region. Dapat uh, UP sa even if they do it much, they have started it much later. Uh, that's why in the conference in, in May, only my presentation, my case study, appeared in the World University News and appeared in the magazine of Asian Gates. It was only the presentation of UP that appeared in the whole in the whole text. That, that is an indication of how how you know how, how good it, uh, it sounded to them. Uh, but there are tensions, because the primary tension is how do you incentivize public service? Uh, sa promotion system, yung, yung extension eh, maliit lang. Uh, mahirap isulat yung public service into ISI journals. Mahirap ipasok. You know, these are the uh, very big problems that is one of the priority areas of the regional networks. How do you how do you uh, move uh, to incentivize uh, public service? You last, you know, what's the relationship between Bahino and Padayon? Padayon will help make sure that what Bahino is doing, uh, you know, is is reflected as public service. In uh, in Iligan, the involvement of UP Manila was through UP Manila Bahino. Kasi na very functional yung pahinuhod nila sa UP Manila eh. Sila yung nagdala ng mga doktor, uh, health professionals. Uh, so the role of Padayon will be to coordinate. It will not supplant, it will not replace existing initiatives. There are so many initiatives that need to be put together. What we just need to do is to institutionalize it and put the brand of the UP in all these activities. Sinasabi ni Washington City. Huwag natin agad paniwalaan just because it comes from Washington City. Yeah. I'm really disturbed that that uh, statement has been quoted so many times by, uh, as if uh, it is a, a, a piece of wisdom. <laughs> that, that, that paradox arises only or makes sense only if you assume that the university is a microcosm of the larger society that the university is a mirror image of the larger society. At the beginning, I said, hindi ko nga tinatanggap yan. I hope we'll stop spreading this nonsense of Washington City. So, are there any more comments? Questions? Yeah, there's one over there. Hello. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat.
I would have, I'm Dr. Sergio Tibulan of the Department of Speech, Common Theater Arts. I heard it, my whole class, in language and ethics of communication, but uh, the, the older members of the forum came ahead with their questions. So, sana po, isang paalala din yun, pagbigyan yung ating mga kabataan, magtanong. Sila muna utsukan natin na magtanong. So, ito lang po, yung, yung kaya natin to movement, Palagay ko po, alam niyo po, no? you know something about that. And this is a group that I believe was founded by the late Jesse Robredo. So yung mga, uh, he, he was very much part of the, of the event going around. And there was one time at the School of Economics, Grace Padaka, Among Ed, Kelly Bagilat, uh, Sonia Lorenzo of Nueva Ecija, they all came to speak to the student tree. And I was so impressed that these people who are now making a dent, a very positive dent in their own constituencies, are going around. Ngayon na matay po si Jesse Robredo, na itanong ko kay Grace Padaka, Grace, sino na ang magdadala ng baton na iniwan ni Jesse Robredo sa public service? And she, she was at a standstill. So uh, I hope that, sana ang UP, I don't know, um, Professor Rivera, uh, I'm sorry, De Vera, sorry, Professor De Vera. Ito po ba ay isang, isang area na pwedeng ipakita natin ang expertise natin sa mga uh, local uh, local governors, local uh, local government officials. Uh, kaya natin to, I think, is partly supporting a move started by Sonia Lorenzo of Nueva Ecija. Ateneo School of Governance is there, and they're giving seminars to local government officials. Kasi po talagang alam nyo naman po na many of our problems arise from how we are governed. Meron po tayong uh, voter consciousness na yun going on in the Palma Hall lobby. Nakakatuwa po yung mga estudyante natin. They're involved. My first question was, because I was passing by, Anak, meron ba kayong kinumpida ng taga-komere? And they said, I think, ma'am, meron. Bakit niyo tinanong yan? Kasi yung mga taga-commonly, kung hindi nila papayagan yung mga voter, yung mga voting irregularities, hindi tayo magkaganito. There's so many tricks in their toolbox. And if this keeps going on, talagang hawak po tayo sa kamay ng mga taong namumuno. Yun lang po. Yeah. Yung, uh, yung sagot doon sa dalawang tanong, unang-una, Actually, ang dati ginagawa ng UP, ang problema natin hindi tayo mayabang eh. We don't publicize it well. A lot of the other schools publicize it better than us. But the substantive aspect is UP has been doing this for a very long time. Uh, maybe what the challenge is how do we publicize what we are doing. Uh, and then that's a communication issue and we're trying to do it through the UP website. You know, we're going to try to do it through our dissemination. Uh, but on a practical note, uh, Jesse Rubredo is a product of UP. Uh, you know, it's a product of UP. Uh, and if you if you look at all the Galimpo awardees, majority of them are UP graduates. So, uh, uh, hindi naman kailangan iyabang ng UP yan. Na yung mga winners ay galing ng UP. But one of the things we're going to do in the next couple of months, is we're going to work with the Kalimpok Foundation to do for uh, in the different CUs where we bring together the Kalimpok awardees on certain issues like in Los Baños, we will focus on Kalimpok awardees while in agriculture, but we will pick the Kalimpok awardees while UP alumni and show that UP, a lot of this is because of their training in UP. Yun yung isa. Yung pangalawa, yung doon sa Motors Education, kasama po yung COMELEC din sa ginagawa niyo. Let us leave po yung matulog COMELEC. I met, I, I met with uh, Commissioner Sarmiento, you know, uh, I met, I talked to with Commissioner Sarmiento. And UP is going to sign a MOA with COMELEC for preparation for 2013. Voters education, registration, yung mga yan. No? Because a lot of the groups are interested eh, uh, in, in doing it. But we're doing it in the different CUs. Yung nangyayari dito, pumirma sila with ABS-CBN eh, on an initiative that they're doing. And SIPAG is part of it eh, at the School of Government. You can, you can do that system-wide. Okay. Yan, yeah, ito po ba? Ang sige, sige. President, you next. Yeah, let's just go. 
I was really hoping to be provoked, really hoping for, but I was provoked by uh, colleagues in the panel. Uh, I quite agree with the point of Dr. Gomez. Na yung kung naman tayo masyadong mayabang, eh, because uh, yung uh, claim of being the best can also be a reason for mediocrity. You know, we will be satisfied with what we have. Kaya nga, I was so critical of that slogan na galing yung di. Kaya katulad niya sa, sa Pilipinas, uh, galing yung Pinoy. Eh, Hinangaate sa buong mundo. Dahil uh, champion si Pacquiao. At saka runner-up si Jessica Sanchez. All in the field of uh, entertainment. Ang quality is, we have to try to excel in areas that are really critical, that are really crucial. And uh, well, we, we can be proud of our entertainers, but uh, we should not be satisfied with that. We should uh, excel also in agriculture, in medicine, in design, and so on. Isang point na talagang lagi kong napoprovoke ito. Yung, we are, of course, we should compare ourselves with other universities. We should not be afraid of that. And we actually do a lot of comparisons. Ang tinututulan ko yung trying to compete with the other universities in the world within the framework of the quadrigili simons. And yun sabi nyo, oh, ang babat pala yung UPI, 350. But take a look at what that that instrument is. Primero, quadrigili simons is a business organization. Its main racket is to sell handbooks to students who want to study abroad. Alam ko yun that nung nag-upisa yan, an agent came to visit me and asked for UP to buy and proposed that UP buy sa ano, ano, advertising space dun sa kanya lang, handbook. And sabi ko, wala, wala, we have, that's not part of our problem. Remember, that's the only way you can raise your 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 standing in quality. Kasi ang isang factor na dito yung reputation. But how do they measure reputation? They interview now academics as well as recruiters. We are not interested in having our 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 graduates recruited by to work abroad and. And it's that it was that portion, the category of reputation, that made times the higher education supplement withdraw from that uh, from that survey because they do not even tell us how they selected sample. Uh, now another thing is that it puts too much weight on things that we do not want to aspire for. For example, under the. Uh, Uh, label of internationalization. Ang pinipigyan nilang kung halaga, the proportion of foreign students to the total number of students. No, we cannot even, you cannot even uh, accommodate all the Filipino students that uh, that uh, that apply for admission. Just imagine kung uh, we try to take in uh, more foreign students and they are going to displace uh, Filipino students. That's not our. It, 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 we do not. We are not aspiring for that. Another is uh, the number of foreign visiting professors in your faculty. We, no, is to that they are not having visiting professors, uh, foreign visiting professors to the UP. Most of them are lousy teachers, and uh, well, we. That's why we invested so much. To send to develop our PhDs here, but we did not have much as dependent as the foreign students, this foreign funding agency. Kaya yung punto ko dito. Let us not forget. Pani wala ang ganon yung mga rating rating. Mayon tignan natin kung sino ba yung rating agency. Anong categories at sa kanong weight binibigay nila. So I do not think that we UP should strive to 
to compete with the other universities in that framework. We actually have our own, among universities, we have our own system of rating each other. Another point po, uh, we'll talk about patents. You know, I, I, I was the one as president to set up that patent office. The whole idea, there is not another bureaucracy, but just to help uh, those who would like to, uh, to, have, to apply for a patent, the complicated project. Uh, and that's all. Because I don't think that the Philippines, or even UP, should be so concerned about patents when we have very little to protect. Uh, you know, we have very... Uh, we talk about patents and we howl against uh, piracy if we have already something to protect. Kung wala pa, we should even encourage uh, you know, people to to pirate, and that's how, how, you know, how Japan industrialized itself, you know? Learning from others, not reinventing the wheel, but looking at the wheel and seeing how it can be improved. And uh, to be able to improvise means that you have to have a solid basis in the, in, in the basic sciences. So, ang anong dito na hindi na dapat yung Pabayaan natin patent and we'll let's even turn blind eye at this patent violation kung ang, ang, binab, uh, ang pinapirate yung gawa ng ipang mga, mga tao. I think it, at this stage we should know how to pirate and to improvise. Huwag lang yung mag-copia. Mag, 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 so hindi to, to, to make improvements. You know, I just came back from uh, Hanoi. In 1989, when I went to Hanoi, panay lang yung mga tao. But that time also, they signed a contract with Honda to put up a, a plant in, in, uh, in, in Vietnam. Ngayon, you go to Vietnam, ang dami-dami, wala nang bicycles, panay mga motorcycles and scooters, and they are mostly made in Vietnam. But they look like Honda. <laughs> and then I also noticed that all, all the elevators, the new elevators are all made in, in Vietnam. The old ones are made by Mitsubishi. So they think we should develop a culture of innovation, a culture of improvisation rather than copying. And, and so this, the, we should not be too strict about this patent protection of intellectual property na wala man ang mamasyanong dapat protektahan. Uh, I wonder why they made a small retort but just for two minutes. If I may? Uh, yes, but we have to keep time. Yes. Uh, Professor De Vera also wants to say something. Okay, okay. Uh, I just want to react to uh, the long answer's uh, observation about patents. Kasi doon sa ตอนนี้ก็ยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงยังคงย
does not measure the 600,000 patients that PGH treats every year. Uh, kawawa naman na yung bin. I mean, in that case, you know, it cannot be compared. And there is a move in the region to try to start identifying indicators of public service that the universities can start monitoring and can start lobbying with with rating, rating uh, groups to start including in public service financial. So that's that's one of the primary activities of the networks in the region. Uh, ikalawa, yung sa patent, uh, I, it's not a bureaucracy that is being created. You, you said there's just one person in it. How can one person be a bureaucracy? Uh, what the patent office is doing is first explain what the whole system is all about. Uh, in the uh, in the areas that I attended the lecture, a lot of people in the university don't understand the dimensions of intellectual property. If the contribution of the office is to just explain it, then it would have already earned it the money being put in it That's first. And that is the whole intention all the way from Dr. Nemenso's time, that, that the university should understand the different aspects. Second, uh, the role of the patenting office is to assist the uh, university, uh, you know, innovators if they want to be assisted. If they don't want to be assisted, there's no mandatory requirement. You know, they can go to other agencies of government to help. But they must have something in the university to start helping them. And third, to put the policies in place. Because we don't have policies in the universities yet. Eh? Uh, once the policies are formulated, then we can debate about it, then we can talk about intellectual property rights. Uh, but it is not meant to create an imposition on the university. It is meant to facilitate the uh, discussion, facilitate the framing of a policy. And there are actually many people in UP Manila and UP Los Barrios who are benefiting from it. For example, yung ask of the Lagundi tablet that's covered by a patent facilitated by UP. Uh, if that was not in place, the question is, are we better off not having any assistance to, to uh, people in the university? That, that tablet, which is now the top-selling anti-cuff tablet, binabanatan ni, ni Big Soto na damo, -damo that's from UP. So UP is earning from, from that. Uh, and in UP Los Panos, they have a lot in UP Los Panos, especially in agriculture. Uh, maybe in Diliman, it is not as much. So maybe in Barrio. When we were in Barrio, sabi ng Chancellor ng UP Barrio, hindi pa, doesn't make a lot of sense to us kasi wala kami papapatin. Hindi pa tayo pantay. So it, it depends on how useful it can be across the series. <coughs>